let's go to DC for, for the next question. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. My name is Jennifer Walker, and I teach comparative politics and economics at Sherwood High School in Sandy Spring, Maryland. My question for you is, how can we as educators emphasize the importance of understanding how the invisible hand led to our current crisis, while at the same time encourage students to believe that the market can work? So I think one of the most uh, exciting moments in teaching economics is when kids understand the invisible hand idea, the idea that markets can achieve such complex economic outcomes without any kind of central planning. I mean, Milton Friedman, I think, had, a, had the example of saying, think how complicated it is to deliver a pencil. You think of all the components, you know, the, 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 the wood and the, and the rubber and the metal and the graphite and paint and everything else and delivery and assembly, and you get a pencil for a dollar or whatever it is it costs. Um, and markets can do that because um, uh, the invisible hand says that even though each participant is um, uh, working for their own interest only and there's no central planner uh, involved, that uh, markets uh, still work somehow to deliver that, uh, that result. And indeed, there's a lot of evidence, I think it's pretty clear to everybody, that looking around the world that uh, markets um, have played a tremendous role in creating the wealth that we see in rich countries and in emerging markets that are, are um, becoming rich. So markets are uh, an amazing thing, and um, getting students to appreciate uh, what markets can do is, is a very important part of uh, teaching economics. Now, that being said, um, the next level up um, is to understand that markets also have problems, that there are market failures, there's monopoly, there's externalities, there's many other things that can um, go wrong in markets. And understanding what, uh, how to fix those problems is really an important key to thinking about economic policy in general. Now, in the financial crisis, there were a number of places where markets or the combination of markets and government uh, failed. Um, for example, uh, basic invisible hand economics assumes that information is perfect, that everybody understands basically what they're buying and what they're selling. Um, that wasn't always true, obviously, in the crisis when people were buying um, uh, complicated credit instruments that contained uh, a variety of substandard uh, credit products like subprime mortgages. Um, and the people who bought that uh, didn't necessarily understand everything that was in those, uh, was in, in those credit products. Likewise, during the crisis, there was huge uncertainty about you know, which banks and which financial institutions were uh, in danger because it was very hard to know what the exposures were and what, um, what each uh, institution held and what the risks were. Um, another issue related to financial markets is that uh, unlike most industries, financial markets are prone to runs. That is, if people lose confidence in um, a particular institution or even in a broad set of institutions, and they are providing short-term deposits or short-term funding to those institutions, they have an incentive to run and pull out their money as quickly as possible. And if everybody does that, it's like everybody running for the exit in a crowded theater, then uh, you know, nobody's better off. What happens is that you create huge stress in the financial system. And trying to address the problem of runs and instability is in fact why the Federal Reserve was created in almost 100 years ago to, to provide uh, support for the financial system during periods of, of crisis. Uh, finally, I'd mentioned the too big to fail problem, which is a sort of a combination of government and market failure. Um, institutions which are so big and complex and interconnected that their failure would uh, possibly bring down the financial system, there is a strong presumption in the markets that the government will protect those institutions. And that means that the market is not allowed to work in a sense because people who lend money to those institutions are saying, well, I don't have to worry about whether they're making good investments or taking too much risk because I believe that if they get into trouble, the government will protect them. That obviously leads to very bad allocations. It leads to increased risk in the system. So, there, so to answer your question, I've already lost a chance to answer your question quickly. So let me, <laughs> let me uh, close by just saying that Markets are a wonderful thing, and it's important to understand that, but the financial crisis showed there are some ways in which markets don't always work well. And um, uh, you know, it's, it's just as important to understand that markets can fail as it is to understand that markets are powerful and can give uh, good results a lot of the time.